Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 249 of Korea Podcast. And yes, I'm back after a month of no uploads. And our today's guest is Mr. Kaysen Lem. He's a co-founder and creative director at Throttle Concept Studio, which we'll talk about in the podcast as well. And he's also an instructor at Brainstorm School, which all of you probably know by now. And we're having this call from Los Angeles. And before we go into the you know, meat and potato of the podcast, let me quickly mention that in, that in the for contact section of the captions, you can find the ID to his Instagram account, the links to his website, the link to the Throttle Studio website, and also the link to his art session. So if you want to see more of his works in detail, you know, with a bunch of other posts and details, you know, as you know, you can definitely give those links a, you know, check. And with that out of the way, how are we doing today? Hey, hello. Yeah, I'm good, man. How are you? I'm fine. Like I'm actually recovering from a cold recently, as you can see my pills here and my honey tea. <laughs> yeah. Man, that sucks. Man. Hopefully you feel better. But yeah, thank you yeah, I'm for, good, the, actually. Um, for the invite. Yeah. Yeah, my pleasure. Actually, like I don't know, is it me or is it just you feel you have you been feeling it in the uh, LA area as well? Like are seasons getting more intense or is it just, you know? Yeah, it's it's getting worse. <laughs> it's like getting so warm here. Um, I feel like our winter is just gone, man. It's just like we're going into like the Mad Max world. <laughs> Everything oh, just God. desert and fire and then heat, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Dystopia. We all love that in our fictions, don't we? <laughs> and yeah. So, all right. So let's begin with the signature question of the podcast. It's kind of like the opener. Um, give us a little introduction on how we got into the world of visual arts and design. Basically, tell us your origin story, if you know, how you... Basically, oh, man. became your basically decided to become an artist and get into the art world, basically, and follow art. Yes, my story go all the way back, so it might take a little little time. We got um, time. Yeah, because like for me is since a little kid, like since I was like maybe 10, 11, I always really just suck at school. Like I just really bad, you know. Couldn't like English sucks, math sucks, stitch, everything bad. Um, but I really, really like reading comics, especially Japanese manga. So since like young age, I, I would go out and rent manga every day and just read a bunch of manga. I think um, from there, I started to fall in love with like the craft and art from the manga. Um, so soon I was just read it and I would just start copying it. Like I would just copy the frame from the manga, um, like Slam Dunk, like One Piece, like all those like really big names. Like, like I always really really love like death notes and i do a bunch a bunch of copies on um, and when when it, when i get close to high school um there is like a really it's almost like our version of sat like a big public uh, exam that everybody need to take in order to go to college and my parents is already know that oh nope he's gonna fail you know like um better send him to america to have him pursue whatever that he wanted to do um so i moved to u.s because of that, you know, um, and starting to kind of go go to high school here, but I still continue to draw, um, play a lot of games. I'm a big gamer since a little kid too. Um, and during high school, a game came out called Uncharted, the second one. Um, that game blew my mind, dude. This is so good, so pretty. It was like the first game that I played that feels like a movie. So after that game, I bought the art book of the game. This is like my first art book that I bought. And I looked through the art book and I was like, oh, shit. By the way, I can curse. curse sorry. <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. I'm not sponsored by anyone. So go ahead. Go wild. This yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude, they actually have people that paint and draw in these games. Like, what the, what the F, dude? Like, oh, my God. Right? And I fall in love with concept art. That's the first time I found out about concept art before I thought there's only like, you know, manga and other you know maybe like illustrations right traditional art but i didn't know there's like concept art for entertainment so that was the first time i saw it and i remember there was a piece of art that done by actually james pack it's like an interior room there's like little stairs with like light hitting it i'm like that piece of art really made me like oh my god look at the lighting dude like look at the lighting so realistic like what the hell um and that started all and then uh doing college i um, I got really lucky. So my parents are like traditional, like very kind of Asian, I guess, like Chinese parents. They always, you know, um, they only care if you can survive in the future. Like my parents are a little bit different, like luckily. Um, so they don't push me to become a doctor or anything. But uh, I got an uncle back in the day that used to work at uh, DreamWorks. So she, he was 
um, he wasn't an artist, but he was like a 3D person. He did all this like lighting director in DreamWorks and he make a lot of money. Like he make really good money and also teaches at Hong Kong in like a college. So my parents kind of get it from him like, oh, actually, if you do like entertainment, uh, you can make a lot of money, right? Or like you can at least survive in the future. So they really support me to kind of go through that route. So in in college, I go to, um, I went to a really, really bad, really, really bad school or our institute, if anyone knows this school, they got sued by the guy from them basically, and then they closed down. Um, so when I went to Art Institute, um, I originally started to focus on animation, like 3D animation, but I just got so bored of it, you know, because 3D animation, it's not even like doing storyboard or anything. It's just like making the models, rigging, you know, back, back in the day, it's not like rigging or today, you know, unwrap you, you know, do it manually, like creating the buttons and, you know, um, I was so bored. I was so bored to the point that like, I want to kill, like, I almost like want to kill myself. Like, dude, can I just draw this out? You know, um, but just because of the school and the people that in the school, kind of like in the bubble. So I, I, I was kind of panicking and because like in year two, I'm like, oh, oh no, man, if I keep going this route, I don't think... I can ever get higher when I get gra- like after I graduated. Um, not concept artist for sure. Three D artist, ah man, I don't even want to do three D for for homework. Like I, I can't see myself doing that professionally. Um, so I starting to look for classes. Uh, probably a lot of you guys that are watching podcasts right now going through the same thing. You know, the school that you went to not good. So I understand. I talked to a lot of students that had the same background. I was like, I totally understand. That's why I start going out. First, when I first going out to look for another school, um, I, ve- I was very lucky. Lucky because back in the day, there's no online school. Everything is lo- like location, right? It's local. You have to go to the actual place. And I was lucky enough that I was in Los Angeles and close to Pasadena. Um, so I found a place called Actually Concept Design Academy. So back in the day, there's no brainstorm. There's no any other school. It's just concept uh, design academy. So I went there. Um, I I went there. Meanwhile, taking classes at art institute, and then that that from there it, it kind of like jumpstart my professional career. You know, um, the first time I went there, the the classes I took, I remember it was perspective. Somehow I was like in love with perspective. <laughs> like a lot of people hate it, but I love perspective. So I start perspective, and after that, um, I met Peter Han. You know, if you guys. Should know Piran if you guys you know if you I don't know, Google him. He's like one of the coolest duo on earth, man. He's so cool. He gave me so much more um, knowledge about drawing. So he took he, he teach a class called dynamic sketching, which is a class that we would uh, he took basically like he took the student out to like field trips. You're having a field trips like every two weeks almost. You go out and then he will go through uh, plans, right? We go to like a like a like a park or something, right? We draw different plans, and then we go to um, like an animal, uh, like a zoo, and then we go to a tank land. We call it tank land, basically a tank museum. It's all these like World War Two tanks and chopper, and then he was just live draw like demo in front of you, like everything is traditional. And I really, really fall in love with that, with that kind of like live like sketching and drawing everything like traditional like marker right um and i follow him i think i i took his class like three times in a row i believe two or three times so i have a good amount of time like with him with that like six month to maybe nine month and after that class like the same day i will take his form language as well so i will see him since like 10 a.m to like freaking 8 p.m and the cool thing about peter is he always invite all the students to a coffee shop after the class because he lived pretty far. He have to wait for the traffic to die down. You know, LA traffic really bad. So, but no one really goes a lot of time. So I would just go every every time. So now I'm like meeting him like more than like 12 hours every like Sunday. And that allowed me to ask him so much questions. Kind of like I would just like watch him draw, like ask him a bunch of questions um, in terms of art, drawing, uh, concept art. Also, like, live, you know, he would give me so much, like, live event, you know, like, just really good info about things that I should be doing, um, you know. So he he was, like, one of my early teachers that really changed my life. And this cool thing is, like, later on, he actually introduced me to my first job. Um, it's, a, it's a freelance opportunity with uh, Disney, Disney theme park. Um, and so, yeah, like, everything kind of thanks to him. Um, so when I was in CDA, um Everybody also talk about John Park and James Pack. But, you know, like, you got to take this class, man. They're so good, dude. Like, 
But dude, man, their class is like, it's like buying ticket to a concert, dude. It's like 30 seconds, boom, gone. I was like, dude, you know? Um, so on on around like a year, I think I, I spent like a good amount of time at CDA, about like a year. They opened up Brainstorm. And then I when I saw that, I just went to Brainstorm right away. Um, and then I, I was in their first class. That's where I met all these like, Teachers, also like friends, like Candy Vo, Norris Lynn, you know, like Jay, Dave Sarabia, like they're all from the Brainstorm, Fenian uh, from Terraform Studio. Or, um, and I started meeting these people and then the circle grew bigger and then we all worked together really hard. And and that's basically like how I started. And then from Brainstorm, I just basically uh, studied to like two and a half to, two, to three years. And then I got picked up uh, by Scorepad Studio with James. And James become my basically my older brother slash mentor um, till now, basically, you know, like the reason why I'm teaching as well is also because of him. Um, a lot of like even business side of concept art and, and company stuff. Um, I learned a lot from him. So, so yeah, that's basically my journey of art and how I started. Yeah. That's a hell of a journey I'm at. at. <laughs> and like a couple of things actually came into my mind. I didn't mention that while you were, you know, explaining, um, first you mentioned Uncharted. It's kind of funny because I think it was today I checked uh, one of the stories on Instagram of Colleen. Mm. Colleen Scops, that's her Instagram handle. And actually she was a guest on the podcast before. Um, yeah. Basically, it was, I think, her kind of one of her pivotal points in her career was when she bought Uncharted in 2009. And also, mm. I think in the story she was mentioning that in the, in the span of one month, a lot of cool games like Assassin's Creed 2, mm. Uncharted, yeah. like a lot of cool games in a month. Like it was... Yeah, amount. we don't we don't really get that sort of like hype anymore in the industry, unfortunately. Yeah, it's sad to say there's a lot of disappointment lately. You know, um, the game could look beautiful, but like, excuse my language, but like play like shit. <laughs> like, no, no they can't even get out of a tutorial by crashing the game. You know, I don't, I don't know what happened to the, you know, to the industry, um, which is really sad because I'm also like a big gamer. So every time I see this new IP came, I was like, dude. Holy shit, man. I still remember the first time watching um, like E3 when they brought back out of war. Remember? Like like they were they announced and, and then Kratos walked out from the shadow. Yeah. My boy, right? And, and then I was like screaming in my car, like, wow, my God, Kratos. You know? But uh, but yeah, nowadays it's different. Yeah, very different. <laughs> no, I mean the big thing that I that that's really decreasing is that, you know, as as kids, of course, so, of course, it's also the fact that we're like, it, yeah, we're gamers. Yeah, that we're just getting have, old. <laughs> no, not just that, but <laughs> we experience generations of games. So, and also, we're really familiar with a lot of you know gaming gaming tropes and you know different game genres mm-hmm. and just you know like the, the whole culture. So sometimes you know it might not affect us when when we got older because we're already so yeah. filled with so many amazing moments. Yeah. But but back in the day, like I remember, like even now, like I don't see that much games. I don't see like you know younger generation that really get impacted like that. Whoa, with games like mm. mostly it's just I don't know, like cheap gameplay, dopamine rush, mostly. Yeah, I don't know how to explain and it. There's a lot of like com- like concentrate on. Of course, they want to make money, right? So a lot of online multiplayer, like killing each other, you know, that kind of stuff. Versus like good story. Like a good story gameplay, you know, like a less of that, you know, a lot of like, you know, mul- mul- multiplayer games. Yeah. It's kind of missed the, the good old days, you know? Yeah. Like I remember when I was like, you know, that's actually a memory. I said it a lot in the podcast and to my, all my friends, because it's a really important memory to me. I can still remember when I was like, I think 10 years old, mm-hmm. when I made my dad to buy a, like a video game magazine in Iran. And it was like a video game journal magazine or stuff like that. It always came with a poster and a DVD bunch of tutorials, like a lot of cool things, you know? And I remember, I think I saw Gears of War 2 on the cover. And yeah. also the poster inside was a poster like of a Prince of Persia 4. And as a kid, I was a sucker for Prince of Persia, like, you know, franchise. It was one of my faves, honestly, even to this day until now. Or Fallout New Vegas when I, when I started playing it when I was 12. Like those games, actually, they I still have them. Like, And I, I don't see like... I haven't like the games that I would say in the past couple of years that really had this had those type of effect on me were recently Cyberpunk actually. I actually funnily enough, mm. I I thankfully bought Cyberpunk actually a month ago. So I actually oh, nice. experienced it, I actually experienced it the best way possible with the, all yeah. the patches and the fixes. Full package. <laughs> exactly, yeah. with the DLC. And this nice. was one of them. Um Yeah, there was just I- 
And I'm still playing, like, just to relax. I beat this game before I played it again. It was uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, I heard Dude. a lot of good things about it. I still haven't. That game is it, so gorgeous and so good. And, and yeah, I, it, will, it was, like, the story. If you haven't played I'm not going to say anything about the story, but just just play it, man. Like, the story of I will. of of that game just so well done dude like it's not even just the gameplay the graphic everything's good but the story man mm. yeah and actually speaking of red dead redemption i clearly remember on the night that we went out to bought our first xbox like i think i was like, oh man i, I was 14 nice. the game that they were testing our console with to see if it's working was red dead redemption one and i clearly remember just my eyes were like sparkly like you know those big anime eyes they get sparkly and yeah like, whoa and they were just demoing the first mission of Red Dead Redemption 1. I was blown away with how just magical it looked. Yeah, you know, it's it it just, just, it beautiful, man. And and it's funny, you can talk about like graphics. Like uh, I, I realized like our graphic is so advanced right now that I think we are at the point that like we don't really see like even though there's like a like a next level of graphics, it's almost like so close. I can't really see the difference, you know? But when I go back to look back to like, hey, PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 graphics, like I remember that game was so beautiful as a kid and I watch it again, it's like, oh my God, this looks like a piece of crap compared to what we have today. But this doesn't really matter because the game was still so freaking good. You know, like I think also that like technology got so good that people tend to focus on the pretty graphics, explosions, you know, all that. But the core of the game, which is a story, you know, I think is the most important part. Um they kind of like got left to, left behind a little bit, you know. That's why I don't I don't feel like game got like that much better, you know, in terms of like such a whole experience. Of course, it get like it's really pretty, you know, but it's the the story, you know. Yeah, that kind of makes everything good. Yeah, that's actually such an amazing point. Like because like let's say two thousand five, all right, the graphics mm-hmm. were at this level, and the creativity that the developers had to do to deal like basically that was the amount of technology they had to work with to make yeah. an immersive, impactful game. But now, like, you know, maybe the creativity is, like, grown this much, but the graphics and hardware ha- are here. Oh, yeah. So, so, and <laughs> the problem is, like, they really don't know how to handle these two together to make it, like, an immersive mm-hmm. game. So they just push pa- just push the tech demos and everything to the max, and they think, oh, this is going to sell, you know? But yeah. in the end, the game is not, it's like, eh, like, you know? Yeah, because like back then when everything's so limited, you can only work on whatever that you have, which is like the most freedom is a story, right? Everything's limited. Like no one talk about like player experience, interactive environments, like back in like ni- the 1990s and 2000, you know? Uh, but now we have the chance to do that. But then that means you have to split so much like create, like you need to put people there, the actual design, the environment, you know, put this over there, you know? Like there's so much more to design. Um, than just like a good good old story game. That's why I think a lot of indie games now is like start popping up that they don't need so much. They just need a cool story or or, or like creative gameplay to just make a game successful, you know? So yeah, even though I work on a lot of games that you heard like concept artists talk about like, you know, functions and, you know, but to me it's like story go first. If the story doesn't get, you know, I'm kind of like, eh, you know, I don't really care about the function too much, you know? It might wow me for, for a little bit, but then, it kind of like die downs, you know? Um, yeah, it has to look good. It looks cool first. Like I talk about this, uh, this is like very, very biased, but like the, like the new Tesla uh, Cybertruck, right? It looks, re- yeah, some people like it. I'm, I don't really like the look of it, you know? So therefore I don't even care how much horsepower going to that car. What kind of function is like bulletproof? I don't really care. It's just ugly to me. It's like, what you know, if it doesn't, appeal to me then I, I don't really care and some people it's a function but for me it's like the story you know aspect i think for a lot of people too you know yeah and actually I, I was kind of wondering why don't why won't automotive industry take risks with their designs like they can easily make a super cool no designs idea. and make a lot of money like i don't get there's yeah. so many gamers with a lot of extra money they don't know what to do with. <laughs> like <laughs> literally with just a simple like and I, 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 of course like I, i'm sounding like it is such an amateur of course there's so many factors that go into designing yeah. our aerodynamics the standards blah 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 but come on like we yeah like, make a cool car and just make a lot of money jesus i know man and i mean they used to do that like tesla I think like back when they first came out, they were the only one that like make electric car that looks cool, actually looks pretty. Um, and then all this, you know, factory kind of follow. But 
But the new car, even even I was watching uh, the podcast with the Elon Musk, right? He was talking about the type of truck. The aerodynamics is actually not good because it's, it's sharp angle. You don't want a sharp angle. You want smooth. But they just did it anyways. I was like, then then, then why make it that angle like ugly? <laughs> like, might as well if if the, if that is not the rule, then might as well make it like super cool. Make it into like a like a Halo truck or something, you know? But uh, but yeah, it looks kind of weird. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And um, actually, another thing I wanted to mention, you know, while I was going through the website of Throttle Concept, and you also mm. mentioned him, uh, Kenny Wo, he, he was a familiar face as well. He was also on the podcast, like, I think a year oh, ago. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. And so here's the thing. I have Kenny Wo, Chase and Lamb. My next target is Mr. Dave Sarabia, so I'm kind oh, of cool. Yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. I have the full collection. It's nice, kind of like, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, so we, we actually we started uh, Throttle together. Uh, unfortunately, because like just like live and stuff caught in our way and, you know, they want to focus on the stuff. So right now they're not in Throttle, you know, uh, at the moment. But, you know, um, we're still really good friends. Like, yeah, you should definitely talk to Dave. Dave is awesome too. And you, you, you will like, you will find out too. Like when you talk to him, he's such a like happy, you know, just like good person to talk to, you know, he has like always big smile and stuff so yeah and also the reason why i why i got into cars because of dave dave and kenny they also start getting the cars and then i could start getting the cars yeah i was like damn it everybody getting the cars i maybe i will <laughs> well, get a car too <laughs> so yeah yeah and also one thing you mentioned about like being 3d 3d art being boring and 3d animation like I, I can totally you know understand from your point of view that you were like you know i'm gonna make you know cool being the process of animation but in the end mm. it was just like you're rigging making skeletal meshes you know just yeah mindlessly working with the like you know the yeah. timeline that animators go through so yeah that's kind of technical but you only the people who are like really love animation and they love the yeah. finished product can get that high from it not for yeah. example yeah because like i'm such a coming from like the art side so i'm very like everything like pan and draw all that right but i do have friends that like love it i have a dude that like i remember at, at art institute like i'm struggling rigging one character in like a few weeks right this dude did like eight characters just for fun i'm like dude how the hell do you like but he's just so smart and fast but just i'm just not built that way you know like like it's just not for me <laughs> yeah, it's kind of interesting like like this sort of pattern I see with people, you know, dealing well, meshing well with 2D and 3D. Like I personally, like, don't get me wrong. Like we, we all know that anyone who puts time and effort into something, they can be good yeah. regardless. It's, but yeah, and yeah. you know, people say talent doesn't exist. I actually kind of disagree. Talent exists. It's just our, you know, um, just what we're really into, you know, just genetic. Mm-hmm. I don't know how yeah, to say it. To yeah. To, to me, passion, like talent to me, just equal like passion. Like whatever that you like to do, you do a lot. Then you're like, oh yeah, this is better than other people, you know. Um, but yeah, my passion wasn't in that <laughs> the rigging at all. Like back in the day, I remember, man, like doing the unwrap UV. Like I lost my mind, dude. I'm like, what? What the hell is this? You know, cut it and stretch it and make sure all the box. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah, but thankfully, a lot of those you know annoying things in 3D are kind of yeah. Now it's so much easier now. Yeah. yeah. But just a free Blender add-on, you can do it. Boom, easy done. Yeah, man. Go I'm next. like, I'm so jealous. Yeah, but um, it's, like for me, personal, like 3D was way easier and intuitive, you know? Mm-hmm, like it's mm-hmm. basically like playing with Lego, you know? But 2D, but yeah. there's also another good thing with 2D, like, you know, especially concept artists. Like, actually, my instructor, Tiago, uh, he also said in one of his videos or tutorials, it's like he's kind of jealous of 2D artists, you know? It's because <laughs> at most, they just open up Pure Ref and Photoshop. That's it, you know? They just work mm-hmm. everything on. But with. Dude, like just with a 3D environment artist, you need to open up Unreal, you need to make every asset, then you yeah. need to go have a speed tree for foliage, have you know Maya or ZBrush for something else, you know, have I yeah. don't know, like Marvelous Designer for another like then take the mesh from like it's just such there's too many crafting stations basically in video game terms. I'm gonna explain. Yeah. But yeah. with 2D, it's just you know, one or two crafting stations, you know? Yeah. To make it and like an item. It's, it's like the foundations are always kind of the same. You know, like, oh, perspective, painting, value, lighting, whatever, right? 3D, like, you know, the, the software been, like, evolving every freaking day. Next two months, boom, new software. Next two months, boom, another new software. Now you, like, learn that one, learn this one, and then dump the one that you were using for the past three years, and learn another one, like, two years. You know, you're always, like, jumping around. Um, but, like, 
our industry like almost like start blended now. Like even like concept artists, there's like the needs of using 3D. You know, there's more now. So you you basically kind of doing both. A lot of people like learning the 3D part. Um, but of course, like the concept art 3D will be like laughable in front of a 3D artist. They'll be like. What, what, what the f is this, this? This mesh, man, like it's all messy. Like, what the hell is this? You can't use it, right? Um, it's just like visual, yeah. Yeah, it's just people are getting you know better with tools. Like you know, definitely Blender is mm-hmm. in should be. Oh yeah, Blender is strong. Hand every concept artist, you know, it really helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, now speaking of like, you know all this stuff, I want to ask you something new. So we know that in the introduction, I mentioned that you're a concept artist, and that's basically your main branch of design right now. Uh huh. But- Basically, how did you transition, you know, from everything you experienced to finally realize, all right, I'm going to, you know, stick with concept art. That's my main main thing. And also, mm. how has your experience been from the beginning of your journey as a concept artist till now? Like, you know, your evolution, your uh, basically key points you could tell us about your experience. Like, like why concept artists? Like, why, 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 like, huh, kind of interesting. Like, for me, it's, I think it's doing the brainstorm uh, time that I spending time a lot with, like, John and all this different teacher that first of all I really like games right so I always love just to see the behind the scene of games you know um, rather than animations or other fields um, so that's like a plus to me even talk to people that like oh I worked on like Battlefield I was like whoa dude I love that games can you tell me more about it right um, even like movies like I, I, I also really really like in love with movies I watch tons of movies like almost every day um so also that side too i just love watching like the making of those movies and games um so and also in brainstorm um back in the day like, a lot of people talk about like design you know like coming up like war building i actually really love war building um since i was you know a student um so that kind of like everything that i i circle around myself with that helped me to realize oh yeah i think i really want to go with like concept art rather than you know, animation or even doing storyboard or even animation background. I just want to do concept art for games and movie. Um, I want to world build. I want to do a lot of like just cool sketching, you know, like wild explorations of like architecture, like village, like life and people. And and a lot of time when I'm doing that, like I feel like kind of like playing Sims, you know, you feel like you're a god because you're basically creating a new civilization on paper. You know, and then start making them feel alive, and then you make a keyframe at the end, just like everything back to that one piece to really sell the idea. So I really like that process, like brainstorming and make putting things together. You know, mixing things to make like cool, cool world. You know, um, so yeah, that kind of kind of helps me a lot to satisfy like as a concept artist rather than like other other genre, I guess, other other job or other uh, industry. But um, but yeah, and you said uh, something like. like experience you mean you, you said yeah basically like any key points that you mm. think you could tell about your whole experience like your evolution from the sort of it till now like any mm-hmm. noticeable things you might want to oh. mention yeah so as a student right you always task to doing assignment right you turn like yeah this is this week turning this thing right next week turning that thing um, it's always art, like the art side. You try to push it as far as possible, make it as pretty as possible. Um, when I start working, I actually realize like it's not the case. You're not trying to always push it, you know, as much as you can. It's almost like the the opposite. It's not about doing the art, but understanding the person that hire you. What do they need? It's like you you're working for them, not for the art, you know. Um, and if you shoot too far, it might Dam- like it might damage you, I guess. Like it's, it's the word, it's kind of vague. But for example, I remember my first time um, have a job, right? And I was tasked to do like a sketch for like an environment sketch, like a design. And I got so excited. And of course, the first time you got a job, you're like, yeah, I want to prove like I can do it, right? I push it as far as I can. It was a loose sketch, right? But then I make it like super like tight and final and finished, right? And I submit it one day. And then I remember my art director was like, dude, Casey, this is awesome, dude. But what I'm gonna what what are you gonna do tomorrow when I tell you to refine? And I was like, uh, I don't know, this is done. <laughs> like, oh shit. So now he was like, yeah, it's it's not about creating like finishing all the time. It's like it's not like it's not school, you know? There's a certain point that you should stop and communicate to your team that like, hey, is this good? Do we need to push more or should we pause? Because if you have that much time, right? Let's say you spend eight hours on a day for that one piece. 
but you actually you can submit in four hours. That extra four hours, you can work on the concept number two. So now you're focused on the design, not like submitting the art, you know? And and for me, submitting that art in one day and finish, it's actually hurt me more because now it's like, you know, first of all, if I need to tell you to finish this, you have to push your quality bar higher than what you already submit, which is kind of hard because it's already like very clean. Like what are you going to do to it, right? Second is like now you you basically waste a lot of time. You know, you, you could have just used that time on something else or ask the team if they need need help on any other task because there's so many different things in a production that need help with right so so i learned that later on like it's actually more about working with people you know try to be a a team player rather than you know like a finisher or like an artist like you're really working for team and i also learned that um you let's say you get hired by disney right you're not technically working for disney you're working for the director that get hired by disney you're working for the director. You're working for people. You never work for like the company. You know, like who is the company? No one knows, right? So it's, everything's about people. And and that's why you see it, see this all the time. If a director finish a movie or animation or even a game, he moved to a new studio, work on a new movie. And what happened? He hired the same crew from the past movie, right? Because they work so well together. They're like the dream team. They rather to have the same, you know, the same group to kind of help him because he said, A, they already know like B, C, D, E, what to do, right? It's the same crew, right? So you kind of want to like be the guy that like work with the people. Like always think about them. Like don't think about you so much, you know? Like what they need, why do they need it? Um, so asking questions is actually really important. Like I, I found out this much later. Like art is actually not important. It's how to work with people, your personality, type of question you want to ask, understanding of the uh, project, like even... If I tell you to do a loose sketch, like why do I need you to do a loose sketch? Oh, because we're in an early blue sky phase. That means everything has to be loose. Um, it's all about idea. Um, and then you kind of start figuring out the boundary of what you're supposed to do and not supposed to do, you know? Um, so yeah, it's all about like people. Like you really want to like just be a cool dude, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I learned a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and actually, I wanted to know your opinion on a statement. Like, this is like mm-hmm. something I've actually uh, just clicked in my mind just a couple of seconds ago. I think for anyone who wants to get into the industry, like whether it be just entertainment industry, like not regardless of like animation or game or just whatever, yeah. just entertainment industry, I think a really good mindset that you could have is to at first and foremost try to find what you're really deeply passionate about, like what mm-hmm. you, you have that artistic base in. Because if yeah. you see, like, most people, majority of people, without even them realizing they just straight ahead, straight ahead just see something and they just rush to become, like, production pipeline. Mm-hmm. Right? And there's, like, you know, art. Like, I don't know. Let me make this distinction. Like, usually production art necessarily isn't as refined and doesn't have that oh, magic yeah. in it as much as, you know, just yeah. the art you make yeah. as, like, a hobby or a personal project. So yeah. when you have the base of that, like, you know, you figure out the where you're really passionate about and talented about, then you learn the fundamentals of the to be efficient as an artist in the pipeline production of it. Then later on, when you learn with the intent of becoming an instructor at it later on, I think that is the most I think effective way to get into any role. Because here's the thing: sure, if if like the production thing didn't pan out, you always have a hobby to you know lean back on. You know when you're you know want to mm-hmm. do something for fun. You know. And if the production panned out, cool. But what if you got laid off? Yeah. There's uh, there's also like the of course there's other sides of it. There's business sides of it. There's a like you know. But instruct in, being a really good instructor, I think is like one of one of the most reliable ways to you know have that kind of side income aside from the production thing. And I think you can yeah. as an instructor, you can also have, give us more info and feedback on this statement. Like, what do you think about it? What would you add to this whole formula I just mentioned? Yeah, it's a it's a really good one, and also like. Um, like kind of what you say, right? Production sometimes like, and uh, to be honest, like most of the stuff you see like on our station, um, you, they don't really show up that much of production work. I think that's why a lot of students get confused. They're like, I need to do like beautiful keyframes and all work. They're not, dude. You had to do production art. Like you think they'll hire you to do like a badass painting or are they going to hire Jamie Jones to finish a painting? Probably Jamie Jones. <laughs> and everyone's started, you probably do a lot of like 
drawing of the doors, design the ground, you know, something that not, you know, that big, right? So doing that is really important in the beginning. So understanding the pipeline and, and what the studio want from you, right? And kind of like what you said, like what happened if you don't like that job? Because I do have friends that got in the industry, they thought, you know, oh yeah, we got to do like pretty artwork all the time, but they actually got bored, you know, like, oh, I don't want to. To be honest, like after a while doing industry work, it is kind of like the same thing over and over and over, you know? A Marines attacking a, a naval base and in a rainy storm and then like helicopter landing, explosion in the background. It's always the same shit, right? Um, um, you will get bored. And I think teaching is one of the best thing could ever like happen to you, I think. Um, for me, like the reason why I also get in teaching is I sure James. James was the one that asking me like, hey, Kaysen, I see you as a good like art director in the future. There was like, maybe this is like three years ago, I think, three, four years ago. And he was like, have, do you, have you ever thought about being in like a lead position or even like like art director? Um, and I was like, yeah, I, I think I want to be one day. And he told me like teaching is actually one of the best thing to learn how to become an art director. Because that's basically what you do. You know, you, you give people credit, you give them direction what to do. Right, you 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 kind of help them to level up and then and then push the visual to like a next level. So that's exactly what a teacher is doing. So teaching is actually a really good training for that. Um, so that's why I started to teach. And when I started to teach, I fall in love with like just seeing growth of like people. Like you just give them a credit, they did it. They come back. Oh, it looks better. You know, it's you're almost like wow. Is it you know like wow? They just got better because they're crit, and then you just want to like give more, and then they just get better and better and better, right? You're like, damn, dude, like it's crazy. It it's like there's a lot of like some sort of like happiness, you know, uh, from that. Um, that's why I, I really like to kind of teach. Uh, income wise, it's also a really really good thing on the side that is not industry related. You're helping people. You're kind of like um, almost like planting seed. You know, let them grow on their own. Of course, you're not the only teacher that they have, but set them set them up in the correct way so they can move on to the next teacher. You know, to me, I think that is very rewarding. That games doesn't give you. You know, like to be honest, after a while working in the game industry, um, the stuff that you create, boom, you saw it came out and it's gone. You you, you know, like it's so fast. Um, I did like I worked on the movie like Maze Runner. I was so proud that day. I remember I was like, yeah, I made it into a movie, dude. I made did a scene. I watched a movie. I saw my scene. I was like, crap, gone. Next scene. I was like, dude. I was like, and no one cared about credit, like, except concept artists. You know, like, no one sit there and read all the names at the end. So no one really care, you know? So for me, it's, it's like, to me, like, that doesn't reward me as much as, like, teaching versus, like, you seeing a student, like, just getting better and better, like maybe three months later, they get to like a next level. Now their comps are so much better. The color is so much better. Like, wh- holy shit, dude. Like uh, the fact that like they, they just level up, you know, um, I really enjoy that. Plus teaching is a good way to also do your personal art you, because you're basically doing personal art. You know, you're like, today I want to do some sci-fi. Hey guys, let's do some sci-fi environment. But it's in line, you know, they talk about um, the process, you know, of making art and, and actually it help you as well. Because you keep talking about it, like for me, I, I teach this, a class called uh, concept design, uh, concept uh, C A B C. So uh, concept art book came, right? So we talk about big, medium, small all the time. The fact that I keep talking about it, my big, medium, small got better because of it. My rhythm got better because I keep talking about rhythm and compositions, you know. Um, so it's also a good growth, you know. So it's not like the money part is really good, but also like the growth and the reward of feeling. I think it's so much bigger than doing industry work too sometimes, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And the reason I mentioned the, like learning with the intent of becoming an instructor is actually a mind trick I'm doing it myself because I'm also learning a lot of stuff for my 3D environment course. Yeah. And sometimes like learning like new stuff, new tools, it, it gets really like exhausting to be honest. Kind of your yeah. brain kind of resists, like doesn't want to learn new stuff. Like it's like, I've had enough, you know, your brain mm-hmm. tells you that. So for me, you know, I said that, all right, Imagine this room team. Imagine you need to learn this stuff. Then in two weeks, you're going to have a lecture and you're going to get paid good money for it. Now my, my brain is like, Ooh, now this seems interesting. Let's learn, you know, like that yeah. type of stuff, you know, and it's kind of like part of Feynman technique as well. Like basically, you know, learning something, taking notes and trying to teach that to someone else and take feedback. Yeah. And you learn yeah. much better. Yeah. And I, I got very lucky to expose to so many good teachers like James Pack, John Park, uh, Peter Han, Jonathan Cole, 
you know, Junon, like all these really good uh, artists. And also they're just good people. Um, like especially Peter, Peter Han and James, they were the one that like literally told me like, um, like James was the one actually was like, hey, you know, all this stuff, like basically I would tell all my students where I learned my stuff from. Like, hey, I'm talking about composition. Hey, this composition, blah, blah, blah. By the way, I, this is what I learned from James. You know, I always kind of credit them because like, I believe the like I, they need to know where the source came from, you know. Maybe they learn it from somewhere else, you know. It's like it's not it's not like me teaching them. I'm just like a passenger that passing down this information that I learned from them to you, you know. And it's their job to pass it down to the next generation, you know. And that's what I learned from uh, James and also Peter. You know, I feel like that's the that's the mindset that really uh, amazed me, you know, um, because they were the type that you can literally ask them anything. They they don't hold back. They teach you everything. You know, it's not like some teacher or someone out there like, you, you get to uh, subscribe to my Patreon and then I teach you, you know. Um, it's literally, you just ask them, they're like, yeah, man, just do this, do this. I was like, dude, this is amazing, you know. And I just want to like follow their footstep to just pass down the information. And one day, I mean, the student, they are going to become a teacher and they will teach my student, like my, 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 my son, you know, my my kids, right. So I think it's important to kind of cycle that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And um, now here's an interesting question. How does your design process usually go anytime you want to start working on a new piece or a project? Basically, what does the structure mm. of your pipeline look like usually? Um, so this really depends on the job and also depends on is it personal or non-personal or like industry. So usually for industry, right, first of all, you have to understand the project. Like, uh, what stage are we in? Are we in blue sky stage? Or that means like, is the design kind of set or not set? Are we doing pieces to impress the team, inspire the team to push more like the blue sky? Are we doing pieces to kind of like get the project green lit, right? It's more like inspiration art versus like, oh, is we are doing production work where the design is kind of set. You have to play around that box. This is the design. This is the feel of the location. Can you extract that uh, language and and kind of design this layout in that location uh, in that language? Right. It's more like designs already figured out. You kind of need to take that and apply to different things. You know. Um, so kind of understand the the pipeline. Like when where you at? You know, or you just want to do some cool art, right? Um, second is kind of like break down the project or, or subject matter. <laughs> Uh, let's say sci-fi, sci-fi, we're doing a castle, right? What kind of sci-fi is this? Is it Star Wars? Is it high fantasy sci-fi? Is it like Destiny? Is it like District 9? Is this really realistic sci-fi? Is it more like a uh, diesel punk sci-fi? So understand the subject matter and then start branching out. What does this, what if, whatever that you want to do, um, there's a, there's a, are there any IP out there that kind of like it or feels like it? I will start watching movies. You know, like, if, if for example, oh, yeah, we need to do, like, a industrial sci-fi that, like, uh, in kind of, like, invaded by aliens, right? We are, we are military group that come in to try to save them. I was just popping up, like, alien right away. I would just watch alien, like, so many times, right? I watch even, like, Death Space. So I try to, like, stop pick, like, piggyback from all this, like, visual out there first to get the mood and feel, get yourself into that world. Um, even for me, a lot of time, I would just even, like, if I'm not watching a movie, I would put the soundtrack on. When I'm working for that, you know, uh, for that uh, whatever job piece that you're working on. If it's fantasy, I put on like Lord of the Rings, <laughs> you know. If it's like sci-fi, I'll put on like maybe Blade Runner, maybe like Aliens, you know. All this, just get yourself really into that world, like surround surround yourself with that. That's why I have like all these like lightsabers, you know, all this stuff like around me, you know. Um, so it's kind of immerse yourself with that, and then find more references. So for me, it's always kind of break down the design, know where you work where. where Where's the boundary? Like, where is your playground? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to communicate mood, design, story? Are you doing production work? Are you doing pre-production work? And what, what is it? Or are you just doing a pretty illustrations? Even that, who is, like, what kind of style? What kind of color? What kind of mood and day, right? All this stuff, I like to figure it out really early in the beginning with, like, photo references, movies, videos. Like, just get like bunch of uh, collection of like reference and then start breaking down from there and then start working, you know? So I, I heavy depends on like reference and then I start working. Yeah. Does it kind of make sense? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Now, here's actually is this one is kind of like the one of the tricky questions of the podcast. Maybe I should have said that. I don't know. But this is you know <laughs> what most guests usually say. Um, who are some of your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most? Man, there's so many. <laughs> yeah. It's like it also That's depends like on what are we talking about. So, I illustration wise, like if we just talk about like pretty art, right? It has to be Jamie Jones, Kremlins, uh, John Wallen, like all these three. This big three to me is just like holy shit. You know, especially I love Jamie Jones. Like I will study Jamie Jones so much. You know, I even remember a piece of art. You know, Jamie Jones is like my 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 idol. <laughs> you know, like my God. You know, I pray to Jamie Jones. You know, um, like design would be a little bit different. You know, like even Sun Choi is really good. Um, you know, um, design even like because I love sketching and, and drawing, right? I love Peter's work. I love um, Darren Bacon. Darren Bacon to me is like such a cool designer, and I love the way that he draw. I love the looseness that he has in his jo- line joints, but also he's trying to figure it out. You know, trying to figure out the design, right? Um, so I love like if I if I have an art goal that I where I want to be, I want to do like pretty painting, kind of like Jamie Jones ish, right? But I want to focus a lot of design line work too, like just like. Darren Bacon style, you know, Darren Bacon is one of my favorite. Of course, James and John, like those are like speed. James and John to me is the speed and figured out the design because they do work like so fast. I, I, when I was working with James, right. Um, I remember in class, he would do like a badass painting in like 45 minutes, like in class, just like talking and chilling. Right. And then at work one day, he was like, give me a paint over. It was like 15 minutes. And he like literally finished my job in 15 minutes, man. I'm like, what the hell, dude? And and John Park is the same way. Like they paint so fast, that I, I my mind just like explode, you know. And and for me, it's like the speed. Speed doesn't mean like they move really fast. It's the decision making. Like they don't make mistake. They just made it so precise. Like they already know exactly where to do it. Ba ba ba. And it's really really fast. That's why you know. Peter is another one. Yeah, so there's so many like. Um, but you have to really, really pick one. I think I was maybe Jamie Jones because like he's, he's just incredible, man. Yeah, I don't think I can find another Jamie Jones. <laughs> yeah, usually what you're describing is that that type of like efficiency and intuition that only gets yeah. developed after like thousands and thousands of hours of like yeah. doing that thing, and also not doing that thing repetitively because we all know people who probably do work on a craft or skill for years, but they mm-hmm. seem kind of stagnated or plateaued, but. Doing that yeah. kind of practice and work with like a you know, growth mindset, you know, like actually yeah, always I, be willing to absorb everything like sponges. Yeah, I think that you're bringing up a really good point. Like some people will work on the same thing that like doesn't move, it go anywhere, right? I think the difference is, is like that's why study is really important. Like learn how to study. A lot of people just copy what they see, but they are not trying to break it down. Like, hey, why this artist did this? You know, what's the purpose behind it, and how to get there. Um, if you didn't figure out that part, you're just training your eye to copy. Like you don't know the decision making part, you know? Um, that's where like some people might lack, you know, like, oh, I do so much, but like I didn't go anywhere, you know? Um, it's the understanding of like, oh, why do they do it and how do they do it? Like trying to like, you, of course you probably don't know what the true reason, but at least try to piece it together on your own. Just like, oh, he did this so he can pop the silhouette, like that way. Okay. You know, kind of like analyze it a little bit more. It's more about analyzing, understanding the actual labor of like work you know, you know yeah yeah and um now speaking of all this you know great artists we talked about you know there's also like another important question i need to ask you know after that which is any advice and tips for a good portfolio and resume for you know artists you know especially um both for juniors, because like usually when people ask these questions in podcasts or interviews, mm. they are usually geared toward juniors. But I also want you to add like a little bit of like you know extension to that, but for also artists who are in the, in the, have been in the industry for a couple of years, but they want to transition into a higher role or or a company, you know, somewhere more high level. So mm. basically, what you know kind of advice and tips would you have, you know, for that sort of yeah? Thing? Um, so portfolio, right, is. It's a little bit tricky because, like, I would say, um, first of all, you you want to really know where you want to go first. Like, it's actually better if you already have a goal, at least a direction, you know, because, like, I know a lot of people, artists, like, like to put everything, you know, like, throw in everything, you know, that you have, like, a mixed 
pop, right? Um, but for me, it's always better to just have like, oh, I want to go to this type of studio, you know, like wherever the next you want to go to, let's say I want to go Blizzard. And then I will look at Blizzard artists, like what they've been doing, how did they do it, the way that they're showing it, you know, um, and then try to look at their junior and senior art. So you will try to understand in their studio what's the pipe. Like, oh, let's say junior do a lot of line art environments. Although like senior do a lot of um, production painting and exploration of different location. So you want to keyword and break down their work and then do more of that on your own and then apply to this studio. And when you look at Blizzard, right, there's only one Blizzard, but there's so how many studios try to copy Blizzard style? Thousand in the world, right? So whatever you're doing for the Blizzard studio is also fit for those studio. You just need to find out who they are out there, you know? And one thing that I always push people to do is like try to have more than one portfolio too. Because like doesn't it doesn't mean, oh, I want to only work for Blizzard, right? Only one portfolio. You can make another portfolio that works for Naughty Dog. You can want to make another portfolio that works for, you know, like like Disney, right? Um, Marvel or something, right? Um, and each studio tends to like different things. That's why if you have a mix, is sometimes like they doesn't have the stuff that they are looking for. You know, it's, it's not fit for that one studio, but you can create multiple uh, portfolio to show them. And one thing that you could do is also like, let's say you, you're a Blizzard, right? You're a Blizzard hiring, you know, you, hey, I have a, you know, experience. I've been uh, looking for to become a senior artist, you know, like here's my portfolio, you know, for you, blah, 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 right? There's a lot of people do that. Um, for me, it's actually try to talk with them and understand where they come from. Don't try to try to sell yourself so much. I think everybody try to sell yourself. Hey, me, 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 right? Um, the people that are listening to it, like they got tired because like how many people they met a day, right? In light box to see portfolio, dude. They gonna you? They're not gonna remember you, you know. But where's this like? Sit down, right? Hey, man, what's hey? How what was what's your name? Okay, cool, man. So in your studio, um, do you have an internal art team? Like, what's your day like? Um, what kind of work you guys are working? Like, what kind of work you need senior people to to work on? Like, what kind what type of work, right? Like, you can kind of start understanding like the work environment, like what they what their needs are. You know, this is go back to like I don't know if you guys watch a movie called Wolf of Wall Street. You know, like, hey, sell me this pen, right? And everybody talk about like, hey, this pen write really well, right? No, you want to ask them questions if you want to sell this pen. Hey, how long you will be you know, looking for a pen? What kind of budget, right? What do you uh, need this pen for? Right? It's the same thing when you're selling a portfolio. You want to ask them like questions. Oh, so how big is your team? Like how many titles are working on? Uh, what kind of job that you can look for? Are you hiring outsourcing artists or are you just doing uh, internal team hiring today? Um, are there any, you know, anything that particularly that you're looking for um, design wise, you know, arts, uh, in, you know, illustration wise, you know, things like that. Once they say a, a keyword that matches what you have, then you open the book. Ah, oh, I actually have something just like that. Bam. And then you show them the, the work. Oh, I have something like this. You know, you talk about um, you're looking for uh, artists that do a lot of like production work. Oh, here's like some example of my production work, but I also do keyframes as well, right? So now you can actually come in with your work. And once you finish that portfolio, right? By the way, I also have two more portfolio that do fantasy work and sci-fi work. You know, you don't know because sometimes you think Blizzard only working for sci-fi or fantasy. Maybe they're doing a zombie game that you don't know, right? Like, like there's so many different IP going on in the studio. So... And also you can also have an, and then you have another book that like, oh, this is all the everyday work, you know, uh, um, like sketches and, and different random stuff that in it, like stuff that you basically post on our, uh, our station or Instagram, you know, things like that. Um, so yeah, I think understanding the, because like even like for a higher role, um, like someone like a senior, in the fact that you ask question, that's really important and show what type of person you are. You know, like you, you try to express the way that you kind of solve problems, you know? Um, yeah, because at the end of the day, it's the communication. Like like senior artists, a lot of time doesn't mean they are better at line drawing or, or art. Sometimes it's because they are better in communication. They know exactly what people want and what people like, you know? So what, what they needs are, and then they provide the solution, you know? And then that's the... Um, experience that comes in versus like a junior, you know, junior is more like take, take the job and go, you know, it's labor, but senior is more like understanding and more like a mind game, you know? Yeah. You actually, you know, made a really interesting point. Uh, and I think it just reminded me of a, a topic about it. Um, the whole, like, you know, there's hard skills in any job and there's mm -hmm. soft skills, Yeah. but there's, but there's like a base level of soft skills and social skills that everyone should, you know, basically practice 
practice with themselves. Like, you know, when you mentioned that, you know, everyone, for example, in accomplishing as a junior, they have their own portfolio for their portfolio mm-hmm. reviews, or there may, there might be studios that are recruiting or maybe not just that. Maybe you're, maybe like a company has a LinkedIn post say, Hey, we're recruiting this position. Yeah. And you know, just, it's kind of like, you know, that hot chick in a party that everyone wants to, you know, yeah. hang around and get the number. Yeah. So you got to understand, they probably heard all the lines. They probably heard everything, yep. they, all the moves. So just be genuine and actually go there if you're interested. And like yeah. people like, here's a very like, you know, thing that most people don't realize. This is, this is from my own life experience. I think there's a, I really believe in energy. It's like people can feel your energy if you're actually, your intent is kind of has an aura. I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of yeah. sounds For weird, sure. but it's true. Yeah, you know? I have a buddy, um, Michael Yuwandi. Um, he's a really successful concept art- artist. They, uh, he, one of the owner of uh, 90 Collective. Like, so he's my buddy, and he told me like um, he will not work with a person until you feel them like, like have a good feeling about them. Like, I, he doesn't even want to talk to them. Like, if he's like feel kind of weird, you know, he only worked with cool dudes. That's what he said, you know, or cool people, right? Um, so it's like the energy thing, and try to like really care about them. You know, it's not about you all the time, you know, and try to bridge the gap and have like common interests, you know, you look at the guys like, you know, maybe they dress something like, oh, you like anime? Yeah, me too, dude, you know, even like in the beginning, you're like, dude, I like Saber, you know, like that's a good point to kind of start talking cars. Like that's why having um, a life outside of art is really important. Like having other like interests, other hobby, you know? Oh, I love movies. And then you guys are talking about movies all day long, you know? Um, I know artists that like, like cars, and then you would just talk about cars all day long. And you don't even talk about art until later. But then because, you know, you guys are so close to each other now, it's like, yeah, man, you have this job. You want to you wanna help out, <laughs> you know? Um, it's all about that connection with kind of people, you know? And also about portfolio too, is try to understand where you want to go where's like big studio versus small studio. Because like a lot of people focus on AAA studio, right? AAA studio tend to like to see like, you want to become like the guy of something. I'm the vehicle person. Or oh, I'm the production person, you know, like you want to be very specific to a thing versus a smaller studio, like our studio, right? We like to see more of different topic, different things. So we would love to see like keyframes. We would love to see line joins. We would love to see how you design all that stuff. Um, you can do like sci-fi fantasy, you know, all that different thing. Because some smaller studio uh, for us, we work with like four or five clients all the time, like at the same time. So um, and you will be juggling a lot more than a regular concept artist in a triple A company. Triple A company, like probably you're the door guy. Okay, you're just gonna do the door for the next two years. But the trip in a in a smaller studio, you probably jump into environment, character, props, keyframe, design. Uh, you know all these different things. So you want to show the that you have the skills to change gear. You know, versus like focus on one thing that really designed deeply. You know, so there's two type two. Yeah, that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And um, I was oh, I was gonna say something and I just remembered. And actually, a really good pointer that I could give to people who might be like, "All right, so wow, you're such a genius, right? And you improve your social skills. How? Well, mm-hmm. I mean, for a start, there's a lot of podcasts and information out there. But I'm not gonna, I'm not like that's a good point to start with if you're interested. But let me give you a practical advice. Um, I know this might sound weird, but first, if you're someone who's really introverted, who has social anxiety, stuff like that. It's a beauty, but try with Discord. There are a lot of Discord mm. Try to first get comfortable, you know, just striking up conversations with different people on Discords, you know, just messaging them, maybe getting getting on calls or jumping in, you know, voice chat that's already going on. And just, you know, when, of course, people are not talking and it, the situation is a bit, you know, or someone notices you, you join, introduce yourself, talk, you know, get in conversation, you know, get your feet wet basically like that. And after that, you can, you know, do that in real life. This is for the case yeah. for people who are like, you know, really socially anxious. And and I actually, you know, I'm, I kind of understand that. But actually, thankfully for me, I it's a weird thing. Like I'm a, I'm a mix of introvert and extrovert. And I never had that for some reason. I all, I, since I was, kid, I already had that, like, you know, innate skill to communicate with people. My communication has always been great. So, um, mm-hmm. But, you know, that's a good way to start. But also, you know, just going out when you're going going out in parties or places, you know, if there's like a common interest you can talk about, you know, go ahead, talk, just yeah. talk with the stranger. Like, come on. And I, and I know yeah. it sounds kind of, you know, weird, but it's true. Especially, you know, if it makes it easier, 
like you know go to meetups that there's a shared you know interest maybe there's a lot of game game yeah. or movies just anything related to things you like you know yeah and just you know, a really good a point, conversation man. yeah and like that this- muscle get this developed yeah yeah, Discord is like a really good one. Back in the day, we don't have Discord. So we do like Google Hangouts and stuff, you know? And I met so many people that I don't even meet. And I think also playing games helps in the, back in the day you, because you're basically meeting people online that you don't even know them. Oh, but yeah. then you you go through a mission, you feel like, dude, man, they, they're my brothers, my sisters, you know? We've been through so much together, but you don't even know them, you know? Um, that way you, you kind of like start getting, you know, like better at talking to people. Like talking to strangers is a good one. Um, finding interest and drama, try to join like a group. It doesn't matter what is it. It could be a gaming group. It could be like Pokemon Go group. You just go out and walk around with strangers and play Pokemon, whatever, right? Um, for me, um, I got into car like this year, right? And this helped me so much with talking to because I would go to this car events. Even nowadays, I'm so used to talking to people because people are so nice, actually. Like they don't, they're not going to attack you or anything, you know, especially if you have a common interest. And I always look at the, the cars and just like, dude, man, I don't even know them. I was like, yo, that's a sick ass car, dude. Like so clean. And they always start from like talking and then like become really good friends, you know, um, like to the point that now I can literally, <laughs> the other day, my wife and I was driving, like I was driving and I see another old car, like an old BMW next to me. And I just rolled down the window and <laughs> I just start talking to him in like two red lines and we just keep talking, you know? Um, and it's just like a practice, you know, having common interests is actually really, really good because you guys are just going to be, you know, you guys can speak the same language right away, you know? And, and it's just like amazed by each other work and, you know, doing that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it could be as easy as, you know, as you said, like, you know, for example, on a hike, you, like, yeah. all of this stuff I'm saying, like, happened to me, actually. Like, you know, you're on a hike, you see, you say, hey, of course, people are on hikes are usually really positive and friendly. They always say hi and stuff. You know, but sometimes you're running, you cross paths with someone and say, hey, you start a conversation. You, where are you going? Mm-hmm. Let's go. Then you start going on and, you know, you talk about it. You say, all right, what are you doing this weekend? Let's actually hang out. That's it. They, yeah. they might go see, they might say no, they might yeah. say yes, you, whatever happens, it doesn't matter, you know, like yeah. don't have this social anxiety and fear that they say no, of course they might say no, because they, they yeah. like, here's the thing, you have no idea how sometimes, you know, someone sees you, but mm-hmm. deep down they hate you, not because of anything personal, maybe you remind them of someone, you just like, there's so many other things, basically what I'm trying to say, don't take anything personally, and just yeah. go with an open mind and, you know, just, yeah. you know, things will happen. Trust me. Yeah. And and try to think positive, you know, like give them a compliment of things that you really truly believe that's like, oh, that's really cool. You know, like same thing to artists. Like, I think a lot of people get scared too. Like even when you go to a like, light box, you see like your like idol just like walking around in front of you. Like, and you're like, my God, I'm so scared. I don't know if I should walk up to just talk to them. And this is people like all these people. They're just regular dudes, you know, like or, or, or ladies, you know, like there's regular people. Um, you can just walk up and just like, hey, by the way, I love your work. Your love, like, change, your work changed my life. I inspire me every day. Thank you so much. For like, even like simple thing like that. Um, I'm pretty sure the person who hear it, they very appreciate that, you know. And it's a good thing to just start conversations, you know. Um, so yeah, just like think, think like positive, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and all of this will come natural to you, you know, uh, all this conversation starts and stuff like that, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. I think your example was really nice. You know, you you see someone, maybe you're on a motorbike, you see another biker next to you and say, hey, what's that bike? What's the mileage? And stuff like that. And you're like, hey, actually, I'm going to grab a a drink or coffee or something, you know? Want to hang out for a bit? And if they're free, you're going to say, yes, that's it. That's literally it. Yeah, just like, I would love to buy you a, a cup of coffee or something, man. Even though they have greasy... Yeah, let me give you my info. You know, here's a little business card thing or like your iPhone tray, whatever, you know. Yeah, if you were to call me, man, I would love to take you out for like a little little dinner, man. Like, thank you so much for all the stuff that you've done during the community or whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Then translate that same mentality to art, like even during an incarnation yeah. or something, you know. Like yeah, you see yeah, someone's yeah. portfolio and you talk about, you know, their artworks. Maybe they're not even someone, no, they're someone at the same level as you. Actually, it's really great. You know, you you, mm-hmm. you start talking about a piece about the portfolio and the conversation keeps going. And if the vibes are right, you'll probably hang out more. That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Actually, this is such a peaceful, I think, information for a lot of people. Um, because the information is out there, but the practical advice isn't really sometimes out there, you know? Yeah, yeah. No and, and that's that's the thing, man. Like, I feel like when you go to art school, everything's so fake. Like, it's kind of like art. 
feeling composition but like when you really start working dude how do you talk to your art director like how do you know what your job is like how do you charge them how do you do business right like how do you write off your tax like all that stuff like practical stuff no one talks about like how to actually do it you know and that's one thing that i actually like to talk about even in my class had nothing to do with like hey we're doing what we think but i don't know what we just talk about like doing our tax next year how do you create a company and write off some stuff? You know, like a lot of things that I think is benefit to people, but no one talk about. You know, it's, it's kind of sucks. Yeah, yeah. Like a really good example I could give. Like I literally don't know. I didn't know lately, Kason, before I talked to him like like an hour and five minutes ago, and <laughs> and, he, and he responded to my message like after months. But that's okay. Now when 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 we're gonna wait, we're gonna have tacos. That's it. It's very <laughs> simple. Like honestly, yeah. I love Mexican. Do you like yeah, Mexican? And and oh do. Hell yeah, man. I love Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, I love uh like the, the uh, what is that word? I forgot the, the the part of it, like the the stomach and everything. It's so good, man. Buche or something. But yeah, I I love tacos. But yeah. And another thing is like even for me, I I have a I have a group of people that play games together. We don't know each other. I never see their face before. Like I only hear their voice. Crazy thing is, I'm going to Canada to meet them in thanksgiving and we're gonna go snowboarding together wow that's awesome yeah and they're all from different places they're from hong kong actually and they're flying in some people in canada and then we have a group that i just stranger that i never met before you know um and i know them for the past like maybe three four years yeah it's just like you know it's just like just ask you know uh, yeah it's 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 really easy yeah it, i mean it's hard for a lot of people but once you get used to it it's actually not, not a big deal yeah <laughs> Yeah, I guess the the best way I could describe this whole thing is that all of these convers all of these interactions just flow naturally in our lives. But the problem is for a yeah. lot of us who have how to start, uh, like, the, yeah, yeah, not just that they can't. They're kind of like mentally they're blocked, so they, they can't really receive or you know kind of give that enter that yeah. sort of state. So first, it's, you need to work on your social skills to basically become an open, warm, you know, give that aura, and you can kind of you know people can feel that you know, and you can yeah. feel that in others too. By it, the way. It's funny because this remind me of uh, James always tell me this like sent like this word right this face like for me it's always think about the lo- like logical stuff I'm very logical actually even though I'm like artist I'm like, super logical like it, it depends everything on like process and step so think about like wor- what is the worst case scenario to talk to this person or this artist worst case scenario they just think oh this guy's weird bye you know that's that's it you're not gonna get shot you're gonna die or anything you know. So what's a possible way? You met a new friend. It's like, cool, you know? So now you balance it. Which way worth it, you know? And James always told me, like, whatever that you're trying to do, if you stop by fear, like, what's fear? Identify fear. You can. Because fear is just a feeling in your brain. There's nothing bad is going to happen. It's you getting scared of yourself, right? Then now you think about it, you're getting stopped by your own imaginated thing, right? It's totally not worth it. Like, you just... You can just go through it, actually, you know? It's not like a physical thing there to harm you. It's fear is just a feeling that you have, you know? I was like, oh, yeah. And and then if you can really believe that, and, and I think it will help you to break through a lot of walls, you know? Do things that you're not comfortable doing before and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's actually such a good tip. And, um, well, here's another interesting question. What area besides the area you're working in right now, which is, of course, in the realms of art and concept art and all that stuff, Mm -hmm. do you have going on in your life? Are you really interested to explore and learn and just, you know, have fun with in the future? Like, basically, anything non-art related going on in your life Mm -hmm. or going to happen in your life? Yeah. So this year, so last year, I I pushed myself pretty hard that I just want 100% focus on art growth. And basically last year to this year, like last year I made made a promise to my family, like, hey, I'm just going to work as hard as I can. I want to see how much I can make in a year. It's more like number, you know? And if I reach a number, like I would take them to like Japan, whatever. I would spend all the money. Fuck it, right? <laughs> so just support me, please, you know? So I, I worked super hard last year. And I, and also I, I trying to figure it out because I, I heard a lot of, student or a friend that get burnt out right i never get burned out so i want to know why i didn't get burned out like if i worked a lot like are there a certain limit that i haven't hit yet so i, think my, I know why actually uh-huh 
Yeah, go on actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. So or like so I was I was testing myself, like, is it a limit that I can like I just not there yet? If I put more on my play, I will feel that. Or is it just my personality thing? You know, like the way that I treat my job where it's just like teaching the balance of life or whatever, right? So last year I tried to like, push as much as I can, which um the, I work like almost like every day till like 12. This is crazy. It was like a, a crazy, you know, of course it makes the money, but is it worth it? Maybe not, right? And then this year, so right now I'm trying to like slow down a little bit, especially I'm doing uh, more like business side of a work now so versus like i'm just doing art last year i'm doing a lot of like crit um because our studio we hire a lot of outsourced artists they're from all over the world right so i have to give them crit give them directions and stuff like that um so i'm not particularly doing art every day sometimes there's a day that i only give feedback and then i'm kind of free and i can kind of do some more with my family so this year actually for me is a lot of focus with family uh traveling um we went to japan last year christmas um, this year, I'm going to go back to Japan on Christmas. I'm going to Canada uh, on Thanksgiving, and I'm going back, to, going back to Japan again on next April. And I'm planning to go back to Hong Kong and Taiwan on the next, next, like next Christmas. <laughs> so I'm already planning all those like little family stuff. So a lot of family uh, side that I'm trying to take care of, you know. That's also a thing that I also learned from James. Like he taught me that you being an artist, that's just one job. Like everybody has multiple jobs. You know, being an artist, that's one job. But being a son, being a husband, being a father, that's another job that you also need to master. Like the people that only master one job is not, you know, it, it's cool for that one. But if you can master every single one of them, then you become like like the, 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 the winner, the champion, basically. So I'm trying to do that for my parents, my, you know. Um, so I'm trying to slow down work just a little bit, work on uh, family uh, hobbies. So right now I'm going back to like making models and Gundams and stuff. And also uh, I got a car this year. So I'm working on the car stuff now. And because of car, I met a lot of car people, just regular people that like cars, right? And now I try to bridge the gap between art and car. I want to. So I don't. I know a lot of people like make prints and t-shirt and all that stuff right, for art, right? Go to Lightbox. For me, I'm not trying to go to Lightbox for that. I actually want to go to like a car um, like an event to sell prints for car people or t-shirt for car people, you know, like regular people. I, I want to do that more, um, than, than the art art side. Um, so there's a lot of like that side going on, you know? Um, so yeah, that's basically what I've been working. Yeah. Awesome. And actually about the thing that I, like the, the point you made, actually, I, I was thinking about this like recently, I kind of like sometimes, you know, some train of thoughts usually compartmentalize, you know, in your, brain after a long time like suddenly you have those light bulb moments you know when you yeah. actually understand some things you know and i think for me one, one thing that i really noticed about myself is i'm since i was a kid i was a really number oriented person mm. like like here's the thing my mindset with the tutorial course that i'm going through is not to like before that because i noticed a change you know actually i caught myself right handed once because you know when you go through the chapters you do the assignments it for me basically this is my personal experience it gets boring after a while. It's it's like, mm. oh, I'm interested, I'm interested in recharge. But if I shift my mindset to, all right, here's the thing. Finish this tutorial and make the environment, your first environment, then have the goal of making 10 environments, for example. Mm. And, and 10 environments might seem low, but for the environments I'm talking about, it's actually a huge undertaking. Yeah. Like, And when you have like a goal, like a top of the mountain to look for, you kind of, your brain switches into this grind mode that, you know, yeah. even though there's rocks throwing at you, you know, you just push through and you don't get tired. You, you actually get more motivated. Your blood keeps pumping more as you get closer and closer, even though your body's failing, your muscles, you want to give up. Like you, that kind of, that dopamine of like, yes, I'm close. I'm going to get there. And once I get there, it's going to be feel awesome. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. I think that's the thing that really had the same effect on you. I think that's why you, you, mm -hmm. you actually kept you getting more excited, I think, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just only like, oh, I can put more on the plate, put more on the plate, put more on the plate. Yeah, do another class, do another mental trip. Yeah, let's go, you know? Like, just want to do like, also like, explore my, my like, how much I can handle. Because if I know the limit, then I know when to not go to there, you know? Because I need to go there first to know when my when my engine's gonna explode. So next time I don't go there, you know, I need to figure out that first. Um, so yeah, it's been a kind of crazy ride. Yeah, it's, it's it's really fun though. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. So yeah, it also leads back lead back leads back to passion. You know, if you're yeah. not working, the only way you could do stuff like this is at something you're passionate about. You know, yeah, like, it could be and, anything. And I think that's also like try to ask yourself. Like I, I'm I'm a type of like like to ask question. Like you know, it's really good for your job, but also try to do that for yourself in life situation. Like. Why? Why do you like it, and what do you like about? You know, I, I to me, I realize I'm I don't really care what I'm working on. I like the process of create. So I could be working on something stylized to sci-fi to fantasy. I don't have a genre that I like to work on. I just like to create. So it doesn't. So to me, it's, it's good because I'm freelance artist, so I can work on all these different projects. But um, for some people, maybe they, oh, oh I don't want to be a fantasy. You know, I wouldn't want to be this thing, right? So if the more you understand what makes you happy, um, then you can repeat it more, you know, like be very pacific to it too, you know? Um, yeah, I think that's a good thing to do to yourself. Yeah, yeah definitely. And actually, there's something I want, that's been going on in my mind lately. And this is, I think you're the first person I'm even asking in, on this podcast. Mm. Is, um, I was kind of wondering, you know, uh, about the topic of workplace conduct, you know, I don't know, you probably had, you know, a couple of years of experience under your belt, so you can probably give me a good, you have some experiences, I guess. Sometimes, you know, in workplace, even in like even big companies or stuff, I don't want to get into too much details of mm. uh, name names, but you hear news and, you know, online that, you know, there's some, some weird things happen, you know, to certain core workers or, you know, some mm. things happen and some weird drama sometimes you know uh-huh. so in your opinion let me paint you a scenario all right imagine you're in the workplace and you're working and there's this person who has a reputation of being really sometimes intense and hostile and as like you know a couple of friends a couple of higher up friends in that same company who get around make jokes gossip about other people and you and they kind of have this narcissistic narcissistic bully type of vibe and you realize sometimes you know you're their target or your friend is a target and how would you deal with that situation? I know this is kind of like a tricky, vague scenario I mm. painted. But for mm. me personally, this is my big problem because I kind of like, you know, when I kind of have like an allergy to this type of people, I punch first and ask questions later. <laughs> so <laughs> thankfully, I'm not, I haven't been in that kind of environment like that yet. Or in, I've encountered this type of be- behavior before a lot, but uh, I'm kind of, you know, in my, in my anxious default state of anxious mind, brain, worried about, mm-hmm. all right, what if one day I, have to, I come across this situation? A lot of times mm. I can brush it off and not pay attention and let them, you know, do anything they want and I just go in my way. They're not worth my time and energy. But yeah. sometimes when it's my friends or someone I love or just one of my good buddies and I see them getting mistreated, I'm sorry, fists are going to fly. Like, But mm-hmm. how would you deal mm-hmm. with that situation? Like, I'm kind of worried about that. To, to me, it's like, first of all, you just try, try to stay calm first and try to... It's, it's really hard to do, but try to look at both parties, you know, like, because like every story have two sides, you know, like try to just don't lean on to one side too early and just like listen to A, listen to B, then do your own judgment, which one is correct. Are there anything that they did wrong in A and B uh, or anything they did right? And then now just make a decision on that, like which side are you on? Like which one you lean towards to, you know? Um, and at the end of the day, it's like, let's say you are kind of in that situation with a friend and in the job area, right? Just leave. I would say if anything that makes you uncomfortable, not even like the the person they work with, right? Pay, uh, work schedule, anything. Just go, man. Like, I think you should go as soon as, like, you don't feel like you're happy, you know? Because I think your, if you, your happiness is number one. If you're not happy, you know, it doesn't really matter how much they pay you. Like, they pay me millions. It doesn't freaking matter, you know? And I know a lot of people stay there, like, oh, I need a job, right? But it's kind of like go back to the fear topic. What's worst case scenario to you? I'm pretty sure you can find another job in somewhere. And you, I think you need to, like, people need to have the confidence to just, just go, dude. Like, toxic, just freaking leave, dude. You got to go. Like, don't be, if the region go, bad. Yeah, there's no point of trying to salvage anything. I would just, like, kind of try to leave. And if, you know, personally, if you throw punches, right, or attack, then, then now you are in the wrong because you attack them. You, you know what I'm saying? So it's like a little Zen thing that like try to see both parties and there's no right or wrong or, you know, it's, it depends on what you believe in, you know, like, and just, you know, either you stay, you leave. And I think anything that you feel uncomfortable, just go. Yeah. Like the first thing you should just bounce. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, that's actually such a, like a good point. I've never, it, it, it seems, it sounds simple, but I've never thought of that. But yeah. 
just yeah, because like it, find another job. Yeah, yeah, and and the thing is like you shouldn't like your action right shouldn't affected by individuals. You, you, you know, um, you are you. You know, like so. Even this guy is really bad, right? If you punch him, you're in the wrong. Kind of like I'm. I'm kind of like thinking like a lawyer a lot of times. You know, like it doesn't matter what causes it, but if you punch this dude, you're gonna go to jail. You know, and this is on you, right? So, um, it's it's how you behave. Like he, they could behave like a dick, right? Whatever, but you should still behave you. You, you know, don't because they're dick. Now you're behaving a dick, just like them. You, you know what I'm saying? You have you should have your own standard. Like how much you know? Like that's me. You know. Um, it doesn't line up to what you believe. Just, just go. You know, there's no point of trying to talk and argue because people don't li- don't listen. You know, even the A and B. Let's say one of them and there's whatever, right? They're in argument, whatever. That like, there's no point of trying to change them because you can't change people. Like, and you should respect what they believe and because they have the freedom. You know, it's not my point to change them anyways. So, um, I would just decide to yeah, just go. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And usually, you know, in, in that situation, if they're friends with the higher ups, you can definitely get blacklisted in the industry. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. you can stand up to them, instigate the fight, and let them throw the first punch and act the victim. And the yeah, that, that's also another smart thing to do if you want. <laughs> yeah, you want to go yeah. in that route too. Yeah. It's a big uh-huh. moment right there. Uh, <laughs> Art of yeah, war, but, you know? Yeah, but usually, even though I said that, there's usually mm-hmm. these instances are not really common, thankfully. But it's, mm. it's really worrying when you hear like from big companies and studios when some like just whew, out of pocket like the story is like yeah that's out, this happened to almost every studio I, I i actually hear a lot even like a lot of like big name studio um sometimes it's not higher up too sometimes it's like literally the person next to you you know um so there's like all sort of people everywhere um so yeah just to me it's like i I try to be more professional and just take care of my own thing first, unless I need to jump in, you, you know? Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And, well, with that being said, we've reached the final question and section of the podcast, which is called Time Capsule. And, uh, all right, so I think you can, by the name of it, can kind of guess, you know, um, where it's going. So, basically, if you could summarize, like, all right, well, Nigel, let me, Nigel, let me tell you the older version of how I used to describe this question to guests. <laughs> like, imagine you're in a space station, all right? And you're stuck in a escape pod, in a escape pod, a space shuttle, you know, and you're locked in. And there's a countdown timer for a couple of minutes, and you're going to be ejected into the deep space, and no one's going to ever hear from you or see you. Just, you're just nothing. You're going to... And, and they keep slamming the door, and they can't open the door, and that's it. But there's a console lock in your cabin that you have the opportunity to make a video message or audio message or whatever. But in this case, let's say video message. And you can say whatever you want at your last moments. And here's the thing. What would you say to anyone who might listen to this podcast at any point of time in the future? Basically, uh, your ne- your essence of experience, golden experiences you have learned thus far in your lifetime right now, how would you summarize them in a couple of minutes? Basically, that's what I'm trying to get at. Mm, kind of like a message to to people that to watching right like like a like a and at, and and also at any point of time in the future and it's not about art it's just from a, one mm, human who has mm, lived as far to another human being and yeah going to come in the future to me i think is no matter what you're trying to do right try to understand the risk and the reward, like try to break it down. Like doesn't matter what kind of decision you need to make, like getting married, buying a house, you know, going through a new jobs and all that stuff. Like try to really be logical and break it down, you know, uh, what's good about it, what's bad about it. And going in with the mindset of like, try to have no regrets, you know, because like I, I see a lot of people that kind of like, oh, I kind of wish that I didn't do that or, or, you know, things like that. Because like I, to me, it's like, if you did it, it's it's totally fine. Like if you fail on that one thing, it is it's a fail forward mentality. Like it is a it's a learning experience, you know? So sometimes you have to go through that to learn something new, right? So don't try to like think of anything as like a failure in your life. It's just like a learning experience for the successful next time. Um try to have no regrets on all of your decision making, you know? And I'm pretty sure even like a really bad decision making that you you made. You learn something from it. So everything, it, it just make a decision. You just need to make it. Then you learn something. There's no failing, you know? So don't feel 
fear to fail and understand what you're getting into it and understand why you're getting into it. Understand that you might fail this, but it doesn't really matter. Just do it, you know, and then you kind of fail for it and learn from it. Um, don't ever, ever regret any failure because they are not failure, actually. They're just experience points. It's like a game. Life is a, is, is, is a game. If you fail a mission, just redo the mission. You know, like you just get experience from it anyways. You level up, <laughs> you know. That's all that matters. Um, and yeah, don't fail backward, fail forward, yeah. Yeah. Also, just remember, there's no respawn points in real life like video games. But, mm-hmm. but actually, yes. Yeah, actually, yeah. jokes aside, like video games has since I was a kid, like helped me a lot with the mindsets of you know how to live life. Actually, like yeah. you know, gamifying life actually really helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I said like, before, don't don't do anything illegal. Of course, <laughs> don't do anything big, like like small stuff. <laughs> yeah. Don't go to jail. <laughs> yeah. Or if you do, better have a good lawyer. All right. So I know. <laughs> uh, well, we've reached the end of this episode. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed our talk. Where can people contact yeah. you if they had any questions? Is your Instagram account okay? Yeah, you can me- uh, message me on my Instagram. Um, yeah, I think Instagram is probably the best because email is sometimes kind of hard to read everything. Uh, but yeah, feel free to you know just message me. All right, awesome. So that's a wrap for episode 249. And I hope everyone who listened to it and enjoyed it and learned a lot of cool stuff from it because this was actually a pretty good episode, I think, in terms of information mm-hmm. and value. And also, quickly, I need to mention something. I, As I say always at the end of episodes, I read all the comments. And yes, recently, in the past couple of month and a half, I've gotten a bit of like, you know, criticism about, you know, my stuff about a podcast. So yes, I read the comments on CastBox, Instagram, and YouTube, and yes, I'm improving on them, and I hope that I did better on those critiques this episode and episodes forward, and more episodes forward, yeah. So I think that's about it. As always, leave any comments, suggestions, or critiques down in the comment section down below. As, you, as you've seen, I read them all. And take care, everyone. Stay safe until the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>